It's not like you, I can teach it to you. Once you catch the vision, you got it. Catch the Vision Podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. That's not how this worked, and it's never worked this way. If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Here's your hosts, John Trimble and Mike Cornwell. This time, no hats. No hats this time. Hi, I'm Mike Cornwell, and with me is my guest, uh, John Trimble, here in our studio. And this is Catch the Vision Live. We record this every uh, Saturday at 8 a.m. Uh, so if you're watching this now, you know, I, if you're live and you're seeing it, you know, good morning. But you're probably not. You're probably not watching this live. But um, today we're going to talk about confidence. Confidence is something that is extremely important. And what I would like to try to do in this podcast is kind of break down confidence, talk about uh, its place in leadership, and help to actually uh, provide a path for you to build your own confidence. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to talk about today, John. And... Um, what I wanted to start this out, I was, um, I don't remember what inspired me uh, to, 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 to choose this topic, but it's a super important topic for leadership. Mm -hmm. But I do know, and um, you know, you could read any number of books that talk about or, or speakers that talk about the importance of confidence with leading people. And um, people, I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say this with like, perfect confidence, but I, I'm pretty sure people don't follow people who don't have confidence. Absolutely not. Um, it, you know, it, it, it just embeds additional doubt in somebody else who, cause they, they know, they may know even less and they may have even less confidence. And then if, when you're kind of coming in and you don't have as much confidence as you, you should. Yeah. I agree with that because if you don't exude some kind of confidence, yeah. people aren't going to pick up Mm -hmm. on confidence they're not going to feel um stable or stable. or or maybe secure, secure to follow you because yeah. yeah but you know i something i've learned in leadership is that some people come up to me and say you know who are you you're so arrogant in what you believe and you're bold oh, about yeah. what you're saying yeah. and i tell them don't mix up arrogance with confidence yeah because some people you're so confident you can't be that confident yes i am I'm not arrogant about it. I just am confident. I've already been through so much that there's certain confidence is done. You know, it's it's a good point. I was starting to write in the description. I ended up deleting it, but something to talk about um, because people, certain people will have this kind of view of like, oh, I should have confidence. Um, and they mistake with pride. Yeah. Very different. Confidence and pride are not the same thing. No, they're not. Um, they're not even sort of the same thing. And I, I, I'd like to talk about like how you build confidence. And in just like a really basic way, because every person out there who's watching, every single person who's out there that's watching this, they need to build confidence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not, I'm, at least as of right now in 2024, I'm not like this um, internet guru guy who's <laughs> going to talk about like your mindset. But I will, well, I, I, will you were. I will break into that a little bit, um, just in the sense of like, uh, like here's an example, right? In the Marine Corps, they have... They have what they call the confidence course. And the confidence course, all it really is, is like just a bunch of um, wooden obstacles that they put together. And it it's supposed to challenge you. You know, if you got like fear of heights, there's a little bit of like you got to kind of do balance beams that are like 20 feet in the air and stuff like that kind of stuff. And for sure, it does build confidence. It does not build. <laughs> you don't feel confident when you're doing it, but that's sort of the point. And um, <laughs> what you come away with understanding is that confidence is actually created by doing activities that you do not feel confident about. Mm -hmm. That's actually how it works. So a lot of people, they, they're like, oh, I don't have confidence or I don't, you know, I don't feel confident enough to do that. And it's like, well, that's why, that's why, that's why you have to do it. Yeah. Because confidence does not, it comes from doing things. Oh, it's from experience. Experience from builds experience. confidence. You know, I, I tried uh, for once. Uh, my my granddaughter was walking down a balance beam. I said, <laughs> I can do that. So I got up there in that beam. I went, whoa, maybe I can't do this. Four inches walking straight down a four-inch beam. So I got up and I tried it. And then I went over parallel bars a little bit. This is way back. 
But then I got back on that beam and I could make a few steps, then jump down. And then I got back up there. The more I did it, the more we get yep. through some of these things, the more confident we feel. You know, the, some yes. some things are are not you're not confident because it's unknown. It's unknown. And some people have to have some experience to get a little confident. But you're talking about building confidence in people. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. And you have to give them a challenge and give them an experience. It is a challenge. That's right. Yeah. You have to, or they won't gain that confidence. You know, they have, No, they won't. I don't see how they will do it. And, and uh, you know, you can't, I, 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 you know, some people are going to have a hard time with this. I'm trying to very <laughs> thinly slice some of these ideas and to make them very clearly that they are not the same. They're not, and in many cases, they don't even overlap even though they seem like they are and they're mistaken. So for example, fear, confidence is not like not having fear. Oh, not no. really. No, no. It's, uh, and it's the same thing with um, like courage. I would say confidence is getting a little closer to courage. That yeah. might be kind of similar, but like fear, just because one does have confidence doesn't mean they have fear, but they've, they're at the point where they have been able to starve their fears to the point where that's not the driving factor. In a lot of what right. they're doing. And, you know, the further you have kind of go along in an experiencing, and I think this is probably something that you've kind of run into for sure, is when you have confidence gained in many areas, you can drag that confidence in other areas. Yeah. I think we have to remember something, too. The, in studying the Word of God, the Bible, there's a section there that talks about line upon line, precept upon precept. And that word precept right. is not preconceived. You don't build preconceived on preconceived. You build an understanding about this situation on top of an understanding about the situation. Yeah. It's precept on precept. It's pre-knowing something, and then you put something else on top of that because you pre-know the one thing. Yeah. Now you know this one. It's precept upon precept, and it allows us to feel. The more I have that, the more confident I feel. It, uh, it's a it's a line upon line. It doesn't just happen overnight, so it's a gradual, progressive thing. Yeah. But it's a pre. It's, I used to teach on uh, when, my teaching on uh, how did you get the concept? If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Nah. Yeah. So so we got to kind of get the concept of what you're talking about or what you're doing, and then by experience, you know, getting that's a precept. When you get a concept, yeah, that's one precept. And then you can put it on another precept. So it's it's line upon it's a progressive thing. Doesn't happen automatic. But you one of the things about, you talk about, about building, you got to give them the teaching, the training, the truth on top of the truth, truth upon truth upon truth. That's really basically what's happening. You know, it's it's funny. I never really considered it before, but you know, to that point, um, confidence is about building a foundation. It's about having no a question. solid foundation. And yep. standing on the necks of the foundations and so on and so on. Um, and, you know, I was going to mention, um, you know, to pull put to put my John hat on being being confident, uh, uh, being confident in God and confident in the Bible also does not just come. It does not just come. I mean, it oh. come it comes in time, but it comes through re repeatedly like, you, you know, it. it it's just one of these things that there's a lot of, I've heard a lot of critiques and criticisms over the years of, of people who are, of course, very ignorant uh, about like the Bible or stories or God or the, these kinds of things. And the more I think about it, the more that's actually a very natural, reasonable thing to do when you don't know. But the reality is, is they need to spend more time to understand then they can start to kind of move, okay, well, let me move us slightly out of skepticism and maybe move into like, okay, well, what is here? And okay, I don't know if I trust this stuff, but the more that you go along, the more that you eventually, because the reality is, is the confidence built from this stuff is you have to take a thing from there and then see it and you're like, oh, I see this maps to reality. That's a precept. Yeah, that's yeah. a concept. Right? So you see here, you take this, you take this, you take this, and you can see it in reality and you can start to see it over time once you start to have that then you have confidence you don't have confidence before then 
Right. You right. have to actually see the application of this stuff. Well, and the word says, don't cast away your confidence. And the, 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 the concept of that is, if you're confident in this or in God or in or Scripture or in some kind of precept that you've come to, don't throw that aside for something else. Don't, you know, you build upon that. You know what I'm saying? You build upon that and you build upon that. That's why when over age, when you're seasoned in God and you've gone through a lot of experiences and, and, and training and teaching, you get more confident in that area because... It was built on a precept that was solid. I mean, that concept has and it has to keep building. You know, you can't just cast that away. I think when we're talking about leadership, we got people that are fearful about leaders nowadays. You got leaders falling like left and right. Yeah. And they're not confident in a leader. Well, I don't know. He might and there's no confident even in the leader. And so that leader, if he's wise, has to give them some solid truth. Mm. I was watching this in a, uh, just the other day in a tent, a tent revival down the street. Okay. I went to that just to visit it. I was, thought it was interesting, a little different than what we're used to. But Is it the one that's kind of near where yeah, you live? Yeah, down yeah. the street and uh, on High Street or uh, Shady, yep. Shady Street. Yep. And uh, the guy started out building on the truth and kept saying one truth after another one. He, he was building a confident structure, foundation, mm. so that... In order for me to tell you, I remember him saying, in order for me to explain this story, I've got to have you understand that this is true and this is true. And he was building concept on concept, and people were going, yeah, 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 yeah. Then when he said something, everybody went, I got it. He did. It. He was very artful about that mm. because he wasn't just shooting it out there. He he built up to it with truth, and then you could say, okay, what's the story? Oh, and then you get the story. Yeah. You know, and I think Jesus. You know, he had truth, too. He spoke when he, he was the truth and spoke the truth. But when he gave a parable, the people that had the truth got it. Oh, yeah. The people that had the truth got it. People who didn't have the truth didn't get it. They were like, what the heck? Simon? What's that story? Well, oh. I mean, that's one of the reasons um, very clearly why the parables are so many of them are like agricultural related. Yeah. Because if you have experience, then you would know. You'd catch it. Yeah. You'd catch it. It'd be very easy to catch. Yeah, you would catch it. And again, like we're catching it, it's back to that. It can't be taught. It's got to be caught. Yeah. We're back to that. You know, I can catch this now because you've been teaching me, training me, bring, building me up. Now I get it. Now I get it. That That's how that happens. It doesn't just, let me tell you this. Oh, I got it. No, it doesn't quite work that way. We have to keep, uh, Paul said, to be repetitious is not burdensome for me, and it's good for you because it's building upon line upon line, priest upon priest, oh, I see. truth upon truth. And so pretty soon we go, I got it. <laughs> well, I mean, to this point, I mean, these these things are, uh, we'll call them rock bottom truths. These are, uh, they take a long time, yeah. uh, like a long time. I mean, I would say time's moving pretty, pretty years. freaking quick. And I would definitely say that, you know, we've been, years. we've been here for four plus years and I'd say only now that there's many of these things, um, you know, four or five years that it's taken to get to the point where it's like, yeah, I think I can trust in that. And, yeah. um, I, I try to, whenever possible, uh, when I see people, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like I, I'm now seeing, I now see the, way people that I've I've known for many, many years, I see them in a new light in the way that they, they do things. And so they'll talk in the same ways that they were talking like five and 10 years ago about something and that they're really concerned about X, Y, and Z. And eventually I've kind of come to realize like, you know, time out, like those have to be the case. You know, I, I don't have like fear of those things that they, those things are the way that they ought to be and that just has come from confidence. Mm -hmm. It's come from confidence. So I don't, um, much more so, I am uh, I will try to prevent myself from going into the, like, actually too much concern about the future, to be honest. Um, yep. I I mean, if you just take, like, sim like simple things, right? Because uh, I, I mention these because anybody who's watching this, I'm sure has fears or knows people around them who have fears about the future, but the reality is, is like, if you really stop and think about it, how many thousands of people came before you yeah, that's a good to, question. to get you here? Yeah. And, and, and do we, <coughs> do, do we honestly believe that it was easier 
before than today. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, in some cases, yeah, but in, in most cases, probably no. Well, in, in the next step of confidence and being confident, um, I've learned to endure. Endurance can't happen without confidence. No. You're not going to endure because you're so scattered and fearful and don't know and not sure. And the, you know, Endure what? You can't even yeah. put together your concept or your precepts. And so you, I, can't, I give up. I can't do it. I give up. Because you don't have that, conf, that confidence and that solid base to endure whatever's going to take place. I mean, challenges yeah. every day. Ch every day is a challenge. I just got one this morning, another challenge. Yeah, You know, and sure. uh, you just, it's a challenge to pray. I got a 98-year-old aunt that's, you know, failing, but she's gaining, but she's failing, you know, because she wants to be 100 and 98. Yeah. So yeah. that's a challenge for me to pray for her and ask God to undertake for her. Uh, it's just another challenge, but I can endure in prayer and keep going because, I'm confident about how, it's another thing too. If we see him answer prayer, we begin to get more confident. How do you, I got a question for you. How do you distinguish, or is it even meaningful, distinguish confidence and faith? And faith? Yeah. Yeah, well, there, there's the, the kind of getting to that. But when it said, cast not away your confidence, the, the Greek word there is, we understand it as confidence, but it's really don't cast away your solidity of faith. Okay. If if your faith is solidified in something, don't just throw it aside for some brand new doctrine or brand new idea. Yeah, no you know, you got to stay with that. That that stuff took time to build. Uh, you know okay. what I'm saying? But uh, before I forget, <laughs> let me <laughs> let, let me have a per like a, that, that that sparked me enough on this. Here's a perfect example of in 2024 the kind of nonsense that's out there that people have like just they're they're losing their minds. AI it's it's so silly. I get, I'm, I'm about to go on on a rant now. I can already I can already see, I can already see it coming. <laughs> okay, AI is just yet another um, like smoke and mirrors. It's it's more hype than anything else. It, it's this thing that like wow, look at this thing that it can do, and it's like captivated everybody's attention. And you can tell that this is nonsense because the entire herd has piled on this instantaneously as though the entire world is going to change. But the reality is is the entire world ain't going to change. All of a sudden, they're like, oh my goodness, now we're not going to be able to believe what we see online. <laughs> Who has ever believed what they see online? <laughs> this is just madness. And AI is like a perfect example of this where people just have like, to your to exactly what you're saying there they why would they cast all of their confidence to the side for this brand new thing that comes in which by the way is not new the concept of ai is at least back since the 1970s yeah and all it is is statistics like it's like literally statistics and so i try to explain people that again back to the foundations right this is like core logic if you Man, I love the Bible. I'm just gonna say it because because it has all the it. Th it has it all there. Um, good fruit comes from a good tree. Bad fruit <laughs> comes from a bad tree. A bad tree will never produce good fruit. There's a lot of different things there. Of course, the main thing with that is about like um, you know following Christ. Then okay, if you follow Christ, you're gonna produce good fruit. That's kind of the main message there. But there's actually more to that because again, I've I've talked about this at, at depth. These are perfect parables. So you can pull a lot out of them, a lot. And one of the things you can pull out of that is the fact of the, it's about the base, about the foundation, and that it can only produce that which it can produce by its very nature. It's, it's nature itself that can produce. It, you know, a, uh, this cup, you know, cannot cook spaghetti. It's a cup, okay? So it's a cavity that can put liquid in it. It cannot cure cancer. That's just not in its nature. And that's the nature of that. AI is built on statistics, which statistics is the aggregation of data. We all know, and we have all been saying for a long time, but somehow yet another one of these things that feeds into people's lives where they see these statistics, and then all of a sudden they believe, they're like, oh, I totally believe what these people are telling me with statistics. And yet they also would agree that statistics is used by liars. 
if you want to yeah. make if you want to make any random point, use statistics. The reason why this matters is AI is nothing more than statistics, and it's been repackaged and repurposed in this other kind of way. They just aggregate in in often cases random contextual, like poorly contextualized information. And then it's this giant mess. And somehow this thing is going to start doing things that its base will not allow. It is not grounded in truth. It's grounded in this fake cloud reality. And so somehow it's going to like, it's going to replace people. No, it's not. Maybe certain people are going to use it as a tool instead of hiring other kinds of people. So they're going to, instead of building like, hiring somebody to make a logo for them, they're going to like try to get this tool to spit out a crappy image to do the small thing that they're trying to do. But everything that still matters and all doing, doing the efforts out in the real world still require the same things that they have always required. Yeah. And the basic truth that you just said, the good fruit comes from a good tree. You can't, yes. you know, that's, you know, and, and that will and, never change. And the nature, the nature of it, this is really a powerful truth. Because there are some things just in its nature yes. cannot produce good fruit. No. It just cannot. It cannot. I mean, it may sound good. It may, you know, titillate our knowledge. On a, yes. You know, there's a scripture that says, and, and, and knowledge will increase. The word there, we make a big deal about it, but really what it is is, and what you can know about will increase. It's the it's the revealing of more information is all it is. We're, we're uh, information that we've never seen before. I mean, you can watch, you can spend 10 minutes and see videos you've never seen or never would see in your lifetime right here. Just let the video keep playing and it'll go to the next one, oh, to the yeah. next one. You can see things you never would have known about a year ago, two years ago, 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. And so, well, even 20 years ago, we didn't even have these. So yep. I'm saying the revela the the realization or the no sure. it's a word is know about it isn't just knowledge like we've gained some kind of um of uh, intellect so we uh, comprehend things better no it's what more things will happen that you know about in latter days than it was way back when that's n a natural occurrence it's going to happen i mean look at think about this what happens 10 years from now with ai and then what happens 20 years from now? What's next? I well, mean, we go, oh, it's, AI is it. That's it. We finally arrived. Listen, life goes on. It's yeah. going to be more later. That, oh, we didn't know this. This is unbelievable. This is great. Yeah, well, I've been 71 years on this earth, and I, I was told when I first got saved in 70, uh, oh, this is going to happen. This is great. And, that, and, and on it goes. And then I find out later that this is just a natural move of things, and and some people were freaking out about it. You know, you know what's absurd about this? It, it to me, it, it, it's getting, it, it's annoying because <laughs> they they like seemingly people don't understand how these things have actually unfolded. The things that have unfolded were not top down, like some mastermind somewhere was like. Yeah. Oh, we're going to keep them on. Like, that's just not how it is. Like, all the technological advances, like, all of these things that, you know, in here in this office, they came about actually pretty organically. Organically in the sense of one step at a time. They solved fundamental problems. And I could point to every one of these pieces of equipment and tell you the specific problems that they that they solved that were innovations to get it to the point where it is. Yeah. I like, even that audio thing right there, that thing is... A um, an all incomplete package system that has the ability, like re real easiness for running a podcast. That yeah. that did not come about because somebody's like, I just oh, we need we need this thing. It's like yeah, no, yeah. no 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 that that came about for for needs. So it's the same thing with like automobiles. It was not some person who was just like the automobile is going to transform the world. That's not what happened. They literally had automobiles. People were playing with it. They, more and more, then all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's a demand. So they started building more. And then they got to the point where it's like, well, we could build these faster and cheaper because that's the limitation for getting them. Yeah, it, it came from the bottom up, not yes, from the top down. it did. I don't know if you've ever seen the thing called Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. And the brain always come up with stuff and Pinky would go, oh, okay, and just believe it. It's a good, it's a good analogy. We got to remember that it didn't come from the brain. It was... First thing came was a wheel. Hey, this goes around and around easier. Yeah, true. 
then pushing it through the, the dirt, a big block, and then the wheel, and then put a couple together and ride between it. And then on and on it goes from a natural, to, you call it natural, but it, it came from the base and it kept developing. Came from the base. Here, here's like an example, and I, I, we're, we're sort of sort of moving out, but uh, out of the topic, but it, it's worth kind of hitting on this a little bit more. The I bring all that up because the way that people, it, it's being sold, like these big ideas are being sold. That's not how this worked and it's never worked this way. So what, what's actually happening is the big consters in, in these companies are going around and selling other big companies like, oh man, if we're not on board with getting this thing, it's the future, we're gonna be missing out. But the truth being, not true. It's just not true. That's not how any of this stuff ever happened. They, and uh, here, let's go down the list. Uh, uh, let me let me back up for two seconds. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the main point is, they're starting with the end of this magical technology that does not exist, and then they're trying to guide the path to get it. That's not how any of these technologies came into place. They actually were playing around. They created a capability. They, they this, went yeah, further. This. Then they were like, well, maybe we can get that and push a little further. Cold fusion, nonsense. Um, AI, like taking over the world, like literally the concept of AI taking over the world came from Terminator. It's just a random fiction movie. No, it's not going to happen. Um, like literally people will talk about that AI is like, AI is going to become sentient. It doesn't have the base by which would come sentient. It's not in its nature. It's not in its nature. It's not. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But, but see, those are the kind of things. If you're not confident, That's why people don't have confidence? If you're not confident in God, and if you're not confident in your precepts and concepts that you've learned, you're going to hear these things take over the world, and you're going to get fearful. That's right. That's what I'm trying to say when I said that earlier. If you have confidence, you can get rid of a lot of fear. I mean, I was fearful walking on that balancing beam at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I can walk right across. Well, I don't know about now, but back then I could walk right across it. Yeah, and, sure. And I couldn't do flips like uh, like she could, but I tried it, and I the more I did it, the better I felt about it. And I had a concept of what it was feeling like and what it was. Yeah, I see. And, and it grew, and um, the fear just didn't come anymore because now, no, no, I can walk on that. I can walk right across, no problem. And I used to walk across trees that fell over creeks and rivers. And we would walk right across the tree, and it was only, you know, eight, nine inches, and we would walk right across them, no problem. We got used to the fact, now, did we fall into the creek sometimes? Yeah. yeah, we did. But we just had to learn and gain that confidence. And so I like what you're saying. It builds from the bottom up. It, you, it does. Uh, and confidence is that precept upon precept. It's it's something's on top of something. It didn't come from uh, up here, and I thought of it. Oh, I just thought of this. This is yeah. great. I mean, we do have thoughts, but they're they're added to what's there. Or and if we stray off in our thoughts, we can get fearful because we get into a place of unknown and we worry. But that's but all you, made up. That's it's that's, made up. But the known, the precept on precept, that's known. That is known. So we get worried about the unknown, and I understand everybody naturally has a fear of the unknown in that sense. But this thing of confidence that you brought, it's really important because if you throw away your confidence that has great reward, the Bible says, you 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 gotta start again. You gotta start over. And you, you know, why would you do that? <laughs> you know. So, you know, that this podcast is catch the vision. And one of the things I make really well known, um, from personal mistakes and seeing other people making this mistake is when you got a vision, you have caught a vision and you're starting to run with it. The next thing that actually has to come is you have to, it's, it, it is like, it is the base of, of leadership in my opinion would be, or at least my perspective is the person who's carrying the vision. I call it carrying the vision. So you catch it and you carry it. Like, I guess it's thrown to you, like it's a football analogy or whatever, yeah, yeah. but you got to carry it. I really think of it as like carrying a flag. And if you do not carry that flag, it's over. They may be marching in that particular direction or going in that direction that you've started, but very quickly they're going to, they're going to start going this way and that way. Like if you were to imagine, you know, way back when 
like Civil War days, like trying to march an army across, you know, the battle or the, the field of Gettysburg, if you did not have a flag actually in the front, this is why the flags exist. They wouldn't be able to see where you're going. They would have no idea where they're supposed to go. And all of a sudden, you know, and, you know, the leader's gone, who's telling them, okay, trying to encourage them to go in that direction. They're going to start going that way. They're going to start running backwards. That's what happens when you don't carry it. Never. That comes from confidence. Yeah. And um, with this, and I, I hope I can help some leader today on this one, you have to have confidence in the process. Confidence in the process. And that's one of the hardest things for a lot of us. Some people are real process oriented and you can just skip this part because you already know this. But some, <laughs> a lot of people do not have confidence in process because you, process is normally like, that's because they jump ship, they jump, they move on. They jump to this, jump to that. If they don't confidence well, well, on the process. The, like, well, a, pro, a process, right, what is a process? A process is I'm going to I'm gonna do this part and I'm going to kind of ignore everything else. I'm going to do it like this. And then now I'm moving to the next part and then I'm going to do it like this. When you do not, when you're not process oriented, you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you do that. And you're like, oh, it's all different when it's not always all different. And so what happens is then very quickly you get spun off. When you have confidence in the process, and I mentioned this for catching and, and carrying the vision, it, it can lead to the point where, as a leader, you do not need to do everything. You really do not need to do everything. Because if you do that, you're going to drop the flag down so you can go do something. Sometimes you have to do that. That's part of life. But you better very quickly pick that back up. The reality is, is no one is carrying the flag. Good, and you have to have confidence point. enough that just carrying the flag is enough. Because if you do not carry that flag and you put it down, that is like literally the end of leadership. It's the beginning of the end of leadership. Oh, I better pick it back up. That's a great analogy. And it's also a, a point about delegation. That Once you impart vision, now that's a whole other concept, yeah. but once we have the vision and we impart it to an individual, we can... We can uh, what do you call it? Delegate someone to keep the flag up. Yes. There's, I'm still saying it's this way, but that guy's keeping the flag up because he's going with me. We have the vision and we're going this way. You're not always holding the, the flag because you got to do other things. No, uh, the, literally the physical act of holding a flag, you, you could delegate that, but you better delegate that to somebody who's, who's going to hold that vision. flag up. They're going to well, hold who's got, yes. Yeah, who's got it. Yeah. They're going to hold that thing. They're going to do exactly what you, you know. That flag is going over there, come hell or high water. Yeah. Okay, this I'm going to carry that flag. This, yeah. And, I mean, I've made this mistake, and uh, I know for me, I am learning from this to the point where almost, like if I have a meeting with people where we're in a project and we're whatever, I will I will always go on a micro rant again, the same rant <laughs> I'll go in on every single time about like what it is and why we're doing this every single time. And the reason is, is because it starts to gauge people's mind of how to, you know, they were going to say this, but now they're going to spin it so that it, it go, it's going towards the vision instead of just being an idea. Now it's an idea and there's kind of spinning it, how it can actually serve and support that vision. And, and again, and I've seen the results of this. Yeah. And again, to the, to the scripture, they that don't have a vision dwell without restraint. They draw without a commitment to something. They no longer care, so they don't follow. And so, yeah. Oh, when no. they, but the, when they have it and they're following you and you're holding the flag up and they're following it, they care. Yes. They want to be that way. So they that and maybe don't, not maybe not in the very first step, but no. If you if you iterate it a couple times, eventually they yeah. they buy into it. Yeah, and and when they start caring, now you've got a group. Now, now you got a group. Now, now you're not just leading yourself or yes. going your way. You are a leader, whether you like it or not. Yes. So so they're going to say, no, we care about this and we see it. We're going that way too. So they got to look at the flag. You got to look ahead. You got to look at the flag to know where you're going. It's very important. Someone else can hold the flag, but the leader is maintaining that flag. He's saying, this is why we're doing this. This is what we're doing. This is why we're going this way. Because we caught that vision. I, I told you about it, you caught it, on we go. Onward we go. It, it, you can't just cast away your confidence. If, if you're confident in it, you stay with it. Otherwise, you're all over the place. Or you just decide to go somewhere else. Yeah. And you can't do that. You, I mean, listen, I know oh, Christian, man. I know that there's people out there following every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there. And I, I ask them, 
Why are you jumping from church to church to church to meeting to meeting? You're all over the place. Oh, yeah. Settle down, get a hold of something, and build upon it, precept upon precept. Uh, you can't. You can ask them why they're going. They won't even know what to say to you. Oh well, I uh, don't know. Well, uh, I, uh, that looked good. This is not concept. This is not precept upon precept. This is willy nilly, and you can't live that way. I know that uh, you have to be open to God's leading and open to the things that are true, but you can't live willy nilly. <laughs> willy nilly is nothing. You're 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 landing on nothing. Some, something he said there kind of really inspired me. The words irrational confidence come to mind. Super important. Yep. And um, as in, you should have irrational confidence. And they have to. Um, I, 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 I love the fact that I have the ability to rationalize. So I can, pick up, I can pick up the Bible and create logic out of it. Of course, there is a logic, but there's also a beyond logic in it. Yeah. And it's super important because... Uh, again, back to confidence. If you stop and try to think your way into confidence, it doesn't work that way. You, in fact, the only way that it works is when you start feeding yourself. I guess they're like faith statements. Like I'm thinking, like, okay, you go to the confidence course, right? There are these tall obstacles, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go in there. You know how the mind goes. You're going to get on there, and you're going to be like, what if this thing falls over? Yeah, what's so the only way that you can actually build confidence in that moment is you have to have an irrational belief, which is like, oh, they must have made this really strongly based on what evidence? You have no evidence to actually support that outside of just that you're on it and it hasn't yet fallen over. But the reason why this matters is because when you're going along, if you actually build, and this is now, now we're talking to the men out there. If you spend all your time doing logic you eventually something will blow it over because logic is is very limited to your ability to gain confidence. And I've seen it day after day after day. Engineers, um, which some people call me an engineer, I'm like I don't I don't really consider myself an engineer, but people who are like real engineers who are like bridges and this and that, they are afraid of their own shadow. And so the way they try to solve that is by getting more information. More information rarely gives you more confidence. And they're trying to like perfectly piece everything together. And if everything can be perfectly in line and I can perfectly understand it, then I'll be safe. No. Which is like not true at all. Good luck with that. In fact, um, <laughs> this is why I asked about faith. It's pretty clear faith, it either they're either synonymous or faith is such a major component to confidence that it's, oh, it's no question about it. You know, no sixty you plus percent. People people don't realize this. This is such a good topic, Mike, because you can't have faith. I, see, I see faith like when it says when you hear the word, mm. okay, at the hearing of faith, and, and then you, you see it, you can't go where you can't see. So if you can't see it, you're not going there. I mean, a pitch black, no light room there. Go in there. They're, they're going to say, I'm not going in there. Nobody goes there. They want light. They want some kind of something to be able them to see something. Yes. So they first have to hear. And when they hear... They, the, the ears, hearing what we hear, Paul said, what you heard in me and seen in me, do it. We have to hear it and see it, and then we can do it. And so mm. the more we hear it and see it, the more we do it, we got confidence. Yes. That's how it works. We got to hear the word. We got to hear the command, the directive. We got to see it. Oh, okay. Go this way and turn left on the road. Oh, okay. We see it, and then we do it. And we gain confidence. It, it's a one, two, three thing. It's not like uh, I, I just follow him, whatever he says, and uh, I have confidence. No, no, you've got to hear it. You've got to see it. Nobody goes where they don't see. I, I don't no, care. No, they don't. I don't care what, you, what kind of person, profession, whatever it is. If you can't see it, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was in, in different uh, groups and things when I was a kid, and I just couldn't see it, so I was not involved. I just couldn't see it. And then the, my teacher... How could you apply any energies? I just could, I, I couldn't... I mean, if you don't... If you can't, like, to, to your point here, how, how would you feel confident in anything that you're doing is of any help and not holding the thing back if you don't even know what it is? You can't... You've got to be able to con have a comprehension that is hearing, seeing, and doing it. Yeah. It just has to be that way because we have ears 
two of them, by the way. So we're hearing, we have two eyes, seeing, and then we do. Uh, the, the doers of the word, that's hearing, seeing, doing. It, that mm -hmm. kind of thing gives you confidence. If you're not hearing what's the right way to go on a topic and you can't see it, I heard what he said, but I just don't see it. You're not going there. I don't care what anybody's like. You're just gonna say, "Well, uh, I'm kind of like in the room, but I'm not in the I'm not in the march. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on my way there because I don't see it." Yeah. You, it, but when you hear it and you say, mm -hmm, "Okay, I see that," you can go. And so once you go and begin to do, the confidence is built. That's why I say, to uh, as a leader, I'm telling you this truth, and I want you to conceive it, get the concept, and you can go. And some people they can't go because they don't have that kind. They don't. Yeah. They don't have that. And so they don't build confidence. Well, I never went there. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel confident about it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you never went. You never heard. You never saw it. Yeah. You're not going to do it. That's and, how I look at and, it. And the confidence, again, it applies um, maybe not in 100%. Uh, like, okay, you do you do something, become very familiar with it because you've done it enough times. You actually gain a, additional confidence, a, a confidence that you can use elsewhere you may not have 100% same confidence, but you can take that and you can drag it elsewhere. This is the importance of actually getting out and doing real things where you get real feedback from the real world experience. that you actually understand something. Yeah. Another scripture says, who by experience grow a peaceable, peaceable fruit of righteousness thereby, by experience. they Something happens that's right and good when we're doing it. When we finally hear it, see it, and we do it, we gain a peaceable, not a chaotic, oh, fearful thing, but a peaceable fruit that comes from a peaceable tree and a good fruit tree. Yeah. And we eat it and we go, ah. And then th th you gain the benefits of this confidence because you're hearing, seeing, doing. And I think that's very important. And, you know, when we talk about, we started this about vision. Again, we got to hear it, see it do it the the all of this is based uh, all of this gives us confidence uh, and those that don't do it there are those that won't obey won't listen won't won't listen don't see it and they're not going here and they're not going he, here's like a here's like a tangible example uh people always i think kind of like tangible examples um so we're starting this um annual Appalachian Apple Butter Festival. Yeah. And the idea behind this, the core vision, I'm now telling you the thing that, that came to me that was like, this is a possibility that we could do and the clarity of what that thing is. And you don't always gain perfect clarity in the beginning, but the further you go ahead, the more, you know, it's like well, an onion and you're, you're, it's unfolding. you're wrapping the layer. Well, you're actually wrapping the layers onto the onion. It seems like, yeah. But anyways, the, the, you know, enough of the analogy. But um, the idea behind it that came to me was, um, you know, we're trying to start this Apple industry here as like a base to build um, a stable um, and usable uh, like agricultural product that I think has a perfect fit here. And... It literally used to be here, so it's not like I'm some sort of like you know yeah. amazing person that can just read the tea leaves. I just it just it was here. Yeah. I mean, literally, read we moved we good. moved into a random house. We didn't even look at the backyard, and there's like four apple trees here. So it's like it, and they're old, like old apple trees. So, anyways, yeah. Um, yep. So uh, we were thinking about different kind of ways of. Um, well, what came to me was the ability that. If we were to have a festival and a different kind of festival, which maybe this is how they all started, but then they've lost their way. Because again, I think yeah. I think that flag carrier basically fell apart. The idea behind it was we could have a real, authentic community gathering to accomplish an, a, a necessary agricultural activity, which is the preserving of food. And so people have kind of lost this thing. They wish they have it. So they're all doing it on their own. And so instead of doing that, the theory in the future, you would bring your apples uh, to there and you would be part of making the apple butter. And then you get your apple butter, whether you actually made it or not. Maybe you contributed a little bit to it. Maybe you just brought apples. And the idea is that you, as part of the community, 
you work together to, you know, to help fill not just your pantry, but your community's pantry in an actual physical way, not by just going out there and buying product on the high C, which is kind of the normal way, right? Because I mean, back to the kind of the church thing, well, if I just donate money, it's like do, money actually doesn't solve these problems. It's actually the activity and or the resources that money can provide. But sometimes there's things that money can't buy. Mm -hmm. Like you, we can't, if you gave me, uh, let's say a hundred thousand dollars to go buy apples here in this County, I, I literally couldn't. I could not spend that money to buy those apples because there's not enough even close being grown. Right, right here. So, but back to the point. So that that's like the core thing. So I brought this out to out to the group and they're like, we're all about it because there's a, enough elements that are already in their lives anyways that they're like, okay, this is perfect. Let, let me say, jump in here yeah. to the group. You spoke to the group. They heard you. Yes. And they're catching the concept. Instantaneously. Yep. And uh, now they're saying... We need to do this. Yes. Again, hear, see, do. And and it's exciting because, I mean, just listening to you, I can catch it. I yeah. can catch it too. And so that's how it really takes place. That's how vision and conference takes place. Now yep. the people are doing, let's say we're doing it, let's say from now, it's three years from now, four or five years from now, yep. all of a sudden uh, people will say, well, there's no sense in doing that. The, your group would say, you kidding? We have confidence yeah, because right. we're now three, four years in the, that's and right. we're seeing the fruit of it. That this this is powerful. So he, here's here's his words. I want to go a little further because you got to understand. It's like the moment it gets out there and they get it and then it's infectious. Like that's so awesome. We should somebody should be a vendor that brings uh, pumpkins to it and do that. I'm like, time out, time out. I agree. At some point in time, we should definitely pumpkins. be talking about doing pumpkins or whatever. That's not the first one. It's apple butter and people don't want to stay on that. They're still all about it. They, they, cause they've already got it and it's like, they've already lived it. And we're like, okay, we're already bored with the apple butter. So let's go do this. And it's like, no, 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 no. So it's like every single time I've, I've had any conversation with it. I have to remind them. You put the flag Just up. remember this thing keep, is to do this. Keep and, the the flag. and the reason is, and this is the importance of it, of why it's so important to have confidence of, even if all I did, like I'm involved in like trying to get like make the apple butter and this, that, and the other. Um, but if all I did was just hold the flag, it would, it would happen. It would happen. Would it happen at the same level it, that it's going to happen it, uh, with me uh, getting involved? No, but um, you know, this is part of, I'm not just going to throw random seeds down. I'm, I'm going to go over there and try to do a little bit of cultivation, but I probably will try to back up a little bit in the subsequent years because yeah, we do need people who are going to particularly own these avenues that are in their kind of natural talents and stuff. Um, yeah. And, but I will still be there holding flag. Remember. And the reason why I do that, if I do not do that, it like people were very quickly like, Oh, instead of calling it the Apple Butter Festival, maybe we should call it the the Winter Harvest Festival. <laughs> no. And the reason why, and the reason is it's like I'm cool with it being about a, you know, the Fall Harvest Festival, like that's kind of the general theme, but if we do not do this, we will not get that. We will get this mush of generalities that are just not that useful well keeping back with you know i always kind of laugh at the uh we were at a place they were having a strawberry festival you couldn't find a strawberry in the county yeah no see that's just ridiculous you know they're they're, they're they they've lost their way but they got to do it uh, the festival's about money now it's no longer about strawberry. The sunflower festival here is a perfect example you go there you see any li sunflowers? literally there's no sunflowers there's no sunflowers no one in the county even grows sunflowers <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, it's nonsense, and so what ends up happening is like you well, start it's money. It's you start to get into it. what, it, what, what is it like? It's like all these other festivals that are out there where you go there and you're like, eh. there's like some things you can buy. You just walk around. You're like, okay, I'll buy from the, I'll buy a funnel cake. Yeah. It's like, but then you leave. Or I'll buy a picture of a sunflower. <laughs> you leave. You leave. You are not part of any community. There is no community there. It's just a bunch of vendors who go there that hopefully they sell some stuff and you meet. Meet a couple people, but it's very shallow. Yeah, there's no community. There's none of that. I'm not Paper trying to like thin shallow. Just I'm not trying to sell all that, but I I, I want to like you know sell my festival. But it's just the point that like from the literal second it came out of my mouth, 
it was it was caught and then dragged in a totally different direction. And it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like I'm I will let you do you can do plenty of things, but you absolutely cannot carry this flag because you're gonna be leading people completely into destruction. Yeah. And I have not said it to people out loud about that, but well, I have had to been a little forceful, to be honest, going like we're not doing that. <laughs> And all I'm doing is controlling yeah. just this one thing. If you want to do that, and I caution people because it's like your role in this, you've got a pretty important role. And if you don't focus on that, which is, by the way, their flag, like that's their their space. If you don't focus on that, we're all going to fail. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a spiritual <clears throat> lesson here. I don't know if you know the song. Oh, it's all about that base, about that base. But I'm talking about B-A-S-E, base. It's all about the base concept and the, the thing that you were saying, the yeah. thing that people caught and were seeing, and they're starting to do it. That that can't it can change by being a more um, more fuller, more full. Know, yep. But you can't veer off that base. It's all about the base. If you yep. lose the base, I mean, where's the sunflowers? They're Where's not, the sunflower fields? They totally lost. I it. can't even find. I can't even see. I, I got a couple growing in my backyard because of my bird seed fell over. A couple of the seeds were sunflowers, but that's about all the sunflower there is. And you know, and 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 some of the some of the internals of these things, uh, they don't understand clearly what the vision like. What a vi <laughs> I'm just like I'm just seeing like. Somebody long in the distance can mess up my festival, right? But the, the but the reality is, is like the vision is the heartbeat. It's the thing that's like it's bringing the people in because they want the vision. When they can't, like the problem with the fall festival idea is, what the hell is that? It's it's too it's too generic. And so for them with the Sunflower Festival, the problem that they have is, what is the vision of that thing? Because it started a long time ago, but it got lost its way. Correct. But there still is a vision because there's still a person who is continually making sure that every year we do this. So yeah, it's but a it's money-minded it, that's, that's the point. They've lost That's it. what it is. So what are you going to get? You're going to get people where that's their vision. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's the vision that they're looking for. Well, maybe if I go there, we're going to make a bunch of money. And then they go there and they're like, I don't know you make any money. You leave like... It's all about money know. again, and we don't want that. And I'll tell you, the people, you know, I I have not, you know, next time I go, I might actually start ta asking people so I can gain a little bit of knowledge. But I'm certain the people who are making, who have the greatest, uh, the, uh, the greatest experience, like from a vendor perspective, are probably the people who are perfectly in line with that vision. They are there to make money the end. The end. And the reason why I, I mention that is... The people who are there like selling art, like when you have art and you're selling it, it's not just about money. It's also about art. But then you have the people who are like, they just have t-shirts. Yeah. Those people are killing it. And I see, and like my wife's like, why would people be out there? I'm like, I don't know, but they are. Well, it's the thing I said, uh, talking about um, <clears throat> Christian music and uh, some other endeavors. Uh, you take the money out, you don't see them. You don't see them. You don't see these uh, artists out there singing when the money's gone. There's no money in it. They leave that. Oh, that, I see. But yeah. the first commitment was to worship God. They were sharing about worship and who God is. Yes, we see how great God is, and we're starting to worship Him and singing these songs. And you see, you got to. It's about the bass. You got to stick with the bass because when they lose that bass, they lose their way. Now it's about money. Same with the festival. Now it's about money. But it can't be just about the no, money it because be what money. happens is you, you've you lost a directive. And this is what's happening in the churches. We lost our vision. We, we, we don't care no more. We don't care if it keeps on going. It's just money making. We don't care no more. We lost the vision. And that's a sad thing. Uh, the, at this place I was telling you, it was a strawberry festival. You couldn't find a strawberry in the county. Which is crazy because other people knew blood coming into that festival concept they are expecting strawberries <laughs> i pro i promise you when we well when they had to be imported they had to be imported they <laughs> do they actually have strawberries they, they had to import okay okay they at least they had that but here they don't even have sunflowers i know you can't import them too well <laughs> they don't have i mean they don't even have like they don't even have like artists creating sunflowers they don't have any concept of a sunflower there why even call it a sunflower festival 
Well, what's the other one? Cranberry. You see a cranberry no, bog? I know not... there's some in some parts in Tennessee, cranberry bog, but it's again. Well, they used to. They, again, now is the origin of it. And, and that's, that's right. And, and that's it lost fun. its way. It did lose its way. And the reality is, is you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, this is something again to kind of mention about this. You have to have confidence in the big process. That happens. That's fine. That's and, why you need new festivals they, with and, new, new right. concepts. And that's why they lost their way because they lost their confidence. Well, I, I, the, the more, original, more, more than likely, the person who ran that thing is long, long gone, and the people who have basically taken it over, they made it in what they wanted to, they, or they thought it would be. They, that's right. And they and it slipped all the way down the ladder to well, like the they made thing. it into what they wanted to be because they no longer were following the vision. Yeah, I agree. Or catching it, hearing, seeing, doing that conference is what I'm talking about. They lose that connection. To the vision. I don't think I know anybody, any of our friends who are actually vendors there anymore. What? Who are vendors there. I don't know any of them. I, I don't either. Uh, we're not. I we, mean, we go to meet I go to find, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? But uh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't buy anything this year. I just walked through it. Yeah. So, you know, th this is a spiritual lesson here. It's really true. If we cast away our confidence, confidence is connected to the hearing, seeing, doing. If we're hearing, seeing it, I mean, you barely got it out of your mouth. People were seeing it. You're about to do it, and you get involved. You got confidence about it. Oh, and yeah. You can't get rid of that if you're going to keep going. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, you can throw away your confidence and other things. I'm not talking about generalization. I'm talking about if you're in the vision, you hear it, you see it, you do it, you're in a confidence, and don't throw that away. Don't throw that confidence away. That that now, that knowing about... and. Uh, Understanding about this is powerful and has to keep going, or it dies, or it turns yes. into a it turns into a Juneberry festival because there are no Juneberries. That's okay. right. <laughs> I and, agree. And I, you know, no, I, we know that we don't want that, but it, we have to stay back to the basics. And, and, it's and, about the B A S E. It's all about the base. And, and to That's this, where you started. To this point, right? Starting starting this festival. Uh, sure, I would like this thing to become big or whatever, but at the end of the day, if it is even just for us and around here, that's fine too because the the purpose of it has a grounded in reality like we want those things. Yeah. Some people want more apple butter than other people. That's fine until they start to realize that we live in a place that is all about apple butter for a reason. Like, <laughs> I can't help speed. I'm, I'm trying to speed people up to like, I, I truly believe that when you move to a location and there's like deep seated traditions there, you should not just cast them aside willy nilly. Now, uh, certainly there's some reasons to not do certain kinds of tra traditions, but something that's like, like apples in this region, you shouldn't just like cast it aside. Cause people are like, I don't like apples and you shouldn't move to be perfectly honest <laughs> because the fact that they could just grow anywhere. Like I've seen them growing next to the dumpsters that like literally somebody threw an apple out and a tree popped up and good fruit came from it. I mean, I don't know how to I don't know how to make it any more plain to you. I've been throughout the entire southeast. I have never seen that. Never. Well, you know, Mike, I'm going to say something else too because the people that are quote following you, hearing you caught the concept, want to do it. There's something very very important about that formula. That I want to say that you, you're not probably going to say or or like, but there's got to be something about you that did not automatically turn somebody off and turn somebody away. Mm. The leader, we were talking about leadership, everything rises and falls on leadership. The leader makes a difference too. I mean, yes, we have to hear and see and do, and you have to impart it, share it, get it across, people hear it, they see it, they do it. But the leader is a very, very important. And you're the... Yeah, I do. I really. see in you a leader that has thought deeply about this stuff and has is, is conceptualizing it. And so when you share it, people catch it. People get a hold of it. That's very, very important. Because if, if I don't... if I don't want to say this in the wrong way. If the leader doesn't sell himself... And I, I don't like the person. I'm probably not going to get in there. And get, you know, they got to. Mm. There's a, also an acceptance of the leader that's involved. That's that's the leader, the the point man, the person that's out there. Because um, 
he's got to have something. If he's got nothing, they're not going to follow. And so I, I'm, I'm just shifting gears a little bit, but leaders have this, and I think God calls, I mean, the, the, the leaders that God called were insecure, murderers, liars, cheaters. I mean, yeah, look yeah, at them all, yeah. uh, David, Moses, but they became leaders to a vision, to a call, held the flag up. Uh, and so there's something special about them that is very, very important. Who's the leader of the of the uh, of the of the sunflower thing? Nobody knows. Oh, I know. I know. I, I mean, the I know about a person who original. Like the, no, I don't know about that. No, that's what I'm talking about. Who's no. the Who's the original? No idea. Oh, I see. I kind of see where you're going now. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I see. It. Who's the leader? Who, uh, the well, that's like the nature of like the importance of the history and why you would want to pass down history because it starts. You the the person. The, the, the con it's the context that then created the vision and that helps kind of shield it over time well you got you got people saying the festival is going on for 150 years and I think back uh, in 1850 mm. uh, they got together two three families and did what you're doing that's right and this is how it developed you you can't tell me that <laughs> look how it's devolved festival it's 150 years old and they're not there's not one sunflower anywhere. Somebody missed the boat here somewhere. Something massive it got dragged me. off to a different thing. You see what we're saying? It's a yeah. very good example. So we've got to not throw away our confidence. We've got to not. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And lose you know, the vision. I'm, I feel very confident in saying this. It's because that festival is managed. <laughs> it's a management endeavor. I'm fairly certain the person who runs it, because I've kind of, I've kind of heard, they're a freaking asshole. Well, they're running a festival. They're not running a no. They're man. They're managing this thing that it's like every year we got to do that. I'm sure, like talking to this person, they're like, we have to do it. Why? <laughs> I mean, make, what value is any it makes of this money. crap? I, I does it? I, maybe for them. Yeah, I, it make, just it, these, there's a lot of self perpetuating organizations. I've been to like we've been to like four festivals around here. I am not interested in any of this crap because all it's the same stuff. Literally, and I'm not the only person who says this because people come up like. It's all just the same stuff. Well, yeah, it's the same vent. Literally, it's the same vendors who go from place to place. There's nothing unique about them. The the one in trade is kind of interesting. You know, it's kind of like a Native American festival. So they got they got some stuff there. They're still getting across at the trade thing. They're still getting across the basic concept that began it. Yeah, I think so. That's important. That's what I'm saying. The Sunflower <laughs> but, Group do not. I don't know what the basic reason. I have no did, idea. did 100 years ago, a bunch of people with sunflowers got together and... and I don't know. It's a good question. Did they... Well, did, nobody knows. Did they mill sunflowers? We don't have no idea what the reason is. Did they do it to find out which one's the biggest one? You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, don't cast away your confidence. Don't quit because in time, you'll become a festival. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I want to be known for, but no, I, no, you know, no. whatever. You're, I don't know if you're actually, if if you're ever actually known for the thing in which you want to be known for. I think, yeah, I, I, I think probably not. Uh, but um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm glad we talked about this confidence. I'm, yeah. I, I actually had kind of low confidence that I would even know what the heck we were going to talk about coming in here. Exactly. But you know, whatever you go and do it anyways. Well, when, well, you know, I thought about this too. I'm glad you said that because we. If you've noticed this, once we get rolling, we get across a concept and a truth. Yeah. And if you catch that out there, say something because we're tr we're 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 like you in the same boat, Mike and I. We're yeah. we're we're endeavoring to go toward. The, it's about leadership and catching the vision, and more and more it unfolds this truth about how we get there. And I'm sharing my experiences in one sense. He has done it in his sense. Yep. And that that should be beneficial to you. It should increase your faith. It should help you uh, uh, grow uh, from faith to faith, I think, from a, a faith in one thing to another faith in yep. another thing. Yep. That, these are very important concepts that we shared today that I think are, are crucial. I, I didn't come knowing all this stuff, but as we... As we uh, uh, it, and unfold it and talk about it, we become understanding of what it was that got us going. Well, to that point, one of the aspects of what we're doing, and I found this out writing my book, right? It's one of those things like, how do you know how to write a book? I don't know. You just start writing and it just starts coming out. But what what it is, is we're, we are sort of formalizing and 
verbalizing and uh, forward braining these things that are happening natural around us. Yeah. And using the foundations that we have come to already trust, how the, these things basically sit on top of that. I mean, I'm, I know for a fact that leadership comes from the Bible. I mean, it is mentioned in the Bible many times. One of the projects I wa I've wanted to, to hop on, I don't know how the heck I'm going to find time for this, is to write a book on leadership in the Bible and doing it as kind of like a pretty thorough thing. I started having my, my wife um, kind of recently read through kind of the whole Bible. And I was like, hey, as a, like a task while you're reading, everything that's related to like these parts about leadership, you know, make little notes on that, that lasted like one week. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So she's already been through the book and it's like, well, we got to like start this project over and go find all these different places. But I don't yeah. know, maybe I can use chat GPT to do that. Yeah. <laughs> use AI. I understand. I'm working. I have uh, 50, 60 notes just on my phone along these topics of leadership because I've been working on this for years and not know, didn't even know I was. Okay, well, we should, definitely, we should definitely bring up one of these things. Yeah, week. and I'm working on, like, an outline that we can look at. But, I'm, I'm t you know, so we can kind of pick and choose. But but these concepts are very important because without them, we people lose their way. Yes. Uh, people lose their way. They just exist. They're they doing nothing. Lose their way. Oh, you know what? It's uh, festival time. Let's go to a festival. You know, they don't know where they're going, why they're there. They it's crazy. Like, I I'll tell you right now, like, uh, I have never had less confidence in computers in my entire life. And as the more I get to know them, the less confidence I actually have. I find it actually oh, borderline miraculous that any of this crap works. From, like, a person who actually does, does that job and it does it at, like, a really high level... There's a lot that goes into making sure that these things work for just the the small period of time. That is the base of that tree. Somehow this thing is going to take over, dude, for like a weekend, and then it's going to collapse on its own weight. Like this stuff does not have. <laughs> this is all momentarily. This is all momentary. All this stuff we're talking about. If we had to like blow all this weight, you know. The, the whistle's blowing outside and the apocalypse has happened and all, we just basically drop all this crap. Everything that we're talking <laughs> about right now, still relevant. Absolutely still relevant. We're going to deal with, we're, we're going to have to, you know, now I'm, I'm putting on my like apocalypse prepper mindset on. Now you have to deal with a bunch of people who are not confident. Well, they're not confident today. They weren't con they're not going to be confident then either. Uh, uh, all these people like you in come fact, up, you have a, you have a realization, you've caught a vision of what needs to happen in this crazy apocalypse. And then you're going to go and you're going to tell people like, yeah, we're going to do the opposite. No, <laughs> no that's not what we're going to do. The well, same thing is going to happen. People that come with no confidence are insecure. And so they're liable to do anything, go anywhere. Yeah. That's right. They got no security. They got well, no you know, that's a really good point. We don't have a lot of time to get into this, but the, what we need to do, and I should write this down, the false sense of security when somebody jumps on your idea right out of the gate. Because all of a sudden you're like, wow, I guess that was a good idea. Well, <laughs> yeah. why don't we pause there because yeah. the work still has to be done. And that was the easiest work possible is just saying something that somebody agrees with. And then down the road... Yeah. No, because I mean, because that, that is absolutely what happens. People, I think that was last Tuesday. <laughs> people people, people do road. that they want to the, 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 like a, a leader will totally get into a trap where all of a sudden they think oh this is they're, they're going to gain a false sense of confidence that this is going to happen because people right out of the gate went adopted it and then they're going to find out they're, they're going to get frustrated which i have many times but why aren't these things happening yes well dude you got to be rallying people i think all next the time. time we could talk about false senses of, of security, of leadership. There's a lot of false stuff that we're resting on and thinking is true. It's not true. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? I got it written down. Oh, you got it written down. I got it written down, yeah, because one of the things about talking about stuff is to expose what is false and what is true. True, true false. And some of these false concepts, false ideas, and, and, and uh, I guess it's false concepts. I don't know what other word to use. We gotta expose them and say, look, this is not true. It's out. It's out there. People have heard about it, but it's based. The, the nature of its base is zero. It's yes. not good. Yes. And it's gonna end up nothing. 
Yeah, so we'll get to one day. We'll get to that. I, I think we. I mean, I'll say leaving this podcast right now. I'd say the big thing I came away with is good tree, good fruit; bad tree, bad fruit. I mean, that's a that parable like really sticks out of mind here. That's the way it is. That's the truth, and we can't get away from it. No, you can't. I mean, good fruit. A good tree does not give bad fruit. I haven't seen bad fruit, but I've I wouldn't never, pick I've it. I've never. I've never seen bad fruit come from a good tree. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Um, I mean, even and, and two plus two equals four, and it's for quite a while now that's been true. <laughs> I don't think that that uh, you you do a lot of Bible quoting. That's not there. <laughs> just, just I can prove that's there. It's just in concept, not in literal. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> so said Paul. Two plus two yeah, is four. So, uh, this is the, this is this is the concept. If we sparked any any of uh, something in you, we definitely want to hear it. Um, please, please do. Definitely, we we want to get the 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 comments. We want to hear from you. Uh, we know you're out there watching, Brian. If you're not making a comment on this podcast, we will take a personal offense to this. Yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take <laughs> take you apart. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we'll we we record this live at 8 a.m. on Saturday. We would. I would really like to get to the point where we actually have people live on it. I, you know, I'm, I try to wonder, like, how, we have to see. Maybe, so, maybe what we need to do is we need to get like a phone number specifically for this, and then like use this thing here to like post it on the bottom, yeah, and have like a phone like ready to go. That'd be super cool if we're gonna like take a phone call. Either take a phone call, or we can see the comment and we can comment. I might actually be able to set that up. You know, you set it like a I little got a bar at the bottom here. And yeah, like, I got a friend that, that oh, I see so and so's on it. Oh yes, and he types a types a message back to me. He said that was good, that good point or something. So that would be interesting. I, I have to leave that with you because yeah, there's a lot. That, there's a lot of technology behind the scenes. To make that's that happen. not gonna happen. But uh, if you're waiting for me to do it, you're gonna. It's a long wait. <laughs> it's a, might, it's John, a long wait. John, you might have to be born again. <laughs> but this, this time back through your mother's this is womb. true this is but anyway true. anyways yeah we definitely want to hear comments um uh, especially if this inspired you or uh any kind of um you know any kind of visions that you got out there um that you know and or i would i would definitely say any kind of experiences you've had with confidence definitely want to hear that um yeah well, and I, I wouldn't mind even like recycling these ideas in a yeah. couple weeks Based on people's um, people's comments, so we'll we'll need that. But um, in the meantime, we'll post these on YouTube and uh, see what your your comments are on YouTube and uh, go from there. We'd enjoy it. So, all right, we'll thank, see y'all. Have thank, a great week. Thank you.